and welcome back to our second session of the day. Once again, it is an honor to introduce our next speaker to you all, who is no great important figure in the field of special uh, higher education. He is none other than Dr. Zodin Huya Patsuao. And like our first speaker, he needs no introduction since his name speaks for itself. However, to do him justice, let me read out his uh, a brief profile. Dr. Zodin Puya Patsuao is an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry at Mizoram University from 2007 till day, and is at present the head of department in charge in food technology department. He received his doctoral degree in 2006 from Nehu, Meghalaya, with his thesis entitled Theoretical Studies on Carbonations, Stability, Structure, and Rearrangements. His research interest includes theoretical organic chemistry, reaction mechanisms, heterocyclic compounds, green chemistry, suspended particulate matters, elemental analysis of hazardous substances. Dr. Zodin Priya has submitted 27 PG dissertations. Under his supervision, two students have received PhD degree and currently he has five research scholars. He is a member in various science body such as state level advisory body member for plastic waste management and handling. Government of Mizoram, governing body member of Mizo Academy of Sciences, editorial board member and peer reviewer of Science Vision Journal, life member of Mizo Academy of Sciences, executive member of Northeast Academy of Science and Technology, members of board of studies, BOS in various departments and chairman of the board of studies of food technology department, Mizoram University, to name a few. Dr. Zodin Puya has a number of publications to his name in reputed journals. Two papers are accepted for publication in the Journal of Molecular Structure and Waste Management Journals in collaboration with Synthetic Lab, MZU, and PUC, respectively, in February 2021, both Elsevier. He served as organizing secretary in several webinar events during the previous year. He has also participated in both national and international level at international conference, Advances in Environmental Chemistry 2011 in MZU, attended international conference on chemistry and environmental sustainability, structural and thermochemical analysis of bridgehead isomer of C8H14, chaired a session in Northeast India Academy of Science and Technology, NEAST, an international seminar on recent advances in science and technology. He has participated in green chemistry, research, teaching and applications, exploring opportunities in green in chemistry, 74th BRNS IANCAS National Workshop on radiochemistry and applications on radioisotopes. He has attended National Seminar Green and Environment Chemistry. At the state level also, he has participated in a workshop, Status and Conservation of Forest Resources in Mizoram, organized by Department of Environmental Science, MZU, resource person in a state level seminar, and the topic he presented was Research Applications in Chemistry, organized by Mipograss and Council of Science and Technology, Environment, Government of Mizoram. Besides this, he has also participated as a resource person in several state level seminar. Some of his co-curricular activities under MZU include him being a member of the Red Ribbon Club, Anti-Tobacco Squad, Community Development Program, Coordinator of Placement Cell MZU 2018 for School of Physical Sciences, to name a few. So with these words, I welcome you, sir. The platform is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, sir, you can. Okay. Shall I go ahead? Uh, thank you so much uh, for the introduction. I think I do not deserve that. Uh, anyway, 
I hope I'm audible. Am I audible? Sir, you are audible and clearly visible also. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Mm. So today I'll be uh, talking about the theoretical probes uh, to the structure and alkylation mechanism of an anti-cancer prodrug, temozolomide. It is also written in the abbreviation form of TMZ. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the structure. What okay. Uh, uh, Demozolomite is a nitrogen containing heterocyclic compound of the triazine type, imidazotetrazine. It is a therapeutic drug and uh, it is a very important alkylating agent a prodrug uh, by the trade names of the Timodar or Timodar. Uh, it is used for the treatment of malignant glioblastoma, it is called, or the GB, which is a type of cancer that occurs in the brain or the spinal cord. So I would like to give a brief, uh, how to say, background before we come to the chemistry regarding uh, this uh, glioblastoma. It is a uh, it is an aggressive type of cancer that can occur in the brain or the spinal cord. Uh, it is a star-shaped cells that nourish and support nerve cells, the neurons in your brain. Uh, and it is called the astrocytes. So when these astrocytes uh, develop rapidly and they form a group, which is called the astromite, astrocytomas, they form a very high grade glioma, which is a grade four tumor. Now the survival rate and the life expectancy, the average survival time is 15 to 16 months only for adults after the treatment. And, but for kids, about 25% of them, they have a longer you know, survival rate for about five years or more. For some, it may be less than even the 15 or the 16 months, for some, it may be more. In the US, 70% of the new cases of malignant primary brain tumors are being diagnosed in adults annually. And uh, about uh, 3.2 out of every 100,000 population are being <coughs> infected by this tumor. The treatment includes uh, surgery, radiotherapy, and the chemotherapy with the adjuvant temozolomide, which we will, we will be speaking today. New treatments are extending life expectancy even more. Uh, we have the MGMT, it is called methyl guanin DNA methyl transferase methylation, uh, which we'll be talking a little bit later, which can give a better survival rate. Now, this is a table taken down from the publication of Guglio Metro, Tiziana Pirieni, and Roberta La Starza. You look here at the MGMT status, unmethylated and demethylated. When we say methylated, we are talking about the alkylation. So out here, the treatment, it may be radiotherapy only, and the overall survival rate is around 11.8 months only. But with the temozolomide, uh, increases to 12.6. Now, when you come to the methylated of the MGMT status, the treatment with only radiotherapy is 15.3, but with the temozolomide, it comes to around 23, nearly two years or so. But that can differ depend, uh, depending upon person to person in their biological system. Now, the treatment, like I mentioned, first thing is to remove the tumor through surgery as much as possible. And the second step would be the radiation to kill any cancer cells that were left behind after surgery. And the third would be the treatment with the chemotherapy and the drug chemozolomide. Now glioblastoma multiform, which is called GBM or the glioblastoma grows very quickly. And it has a finger like projections of star shape in the normal brain. Uh, when it accumulates to form the tumor and to you know, remove surgically every bits that are there, it's not possible. Therefore, these tumors, you know, they have to undergo this chemotherapy with the drug temozolomide to completely remove it, which is sometimes not uh, successful. 
many times actually. The tumors also contain many different types of cells, which uh, the treatments may work well on some person, but at the same time, it may not work at all so on other person. Now, these are some other drugs and the new treatments for global clinical trials, which I need not mention it. Now, the causes and the risk factors are quite important. What causes this glioblastoma is not known till now. Like other cancers, uh, it is believed that uh, the cells begin to grow uncontrollably and they form tumors. This cell growth may have something to do with the gene or the genetic orders. And those who are male and over 50 age are prone likely to be contracted with this uh, disease. Now let us come to the history. In 1955, there was the first suggestion of anti-cancer activity uh, when Clark and his colleagues showed that three, three dimethyltriazines could inhibit sarcoma growth in mice. And in 1959, about four years later, researchers of the University of Alabama they synthesized a very important compound called the carbazine, DTIC, and imidazole triazine, where the triazine is fused with an imidazole ring system. Here we're talking about the heterocyclic compounds. Please remember that. In 1970s, uh, this DTIC was launched into a clinical trial. It was rather successful in rodent, but the hepatic enzymes activity in the site the chrome P450 family in humans is found much lower than compared to rodents. Therefore, there were some drawbacks in that. Now, let me talk about the importance of these alkylating agents. Alkylating agents are nowadays commonly used as chemotherapy drugs in cancer therapy due to its cytostatic and cytotoxic effects. And these alkylating agents are most commonly transferred their electrophilic alkyl groups to ring nitrogen or to the oxygen atoms of the DNA bases. And there are other important factors these alkylating agents have, like the chemical reactivity or type of alkyl group that can be transferred to these DNA bases. But what is very important is that they should usually be monofunctional agent having one particular active site or active group. If it is bifunctional, they can carry two reactive groups, uh, which uh, you know, can cause high cytotoxicity due to the interstrand DNA cross link that can be developed. In the late 1970s, researchers at the Aston University synthesized a new compound and they screened them against mouse tumors. And the lead compound, metazolomide, showed unpredictable myelotoxicity toxicity due to DNA cross linking ability. It affects the immune system. It shows some suppression in the immune system. A second generation monofunctional SN1 type methylating agent, less toxic imidazolotetrazinones, PMZ was chosen, which was with much success. Now, this is the traditional, what you call the reaction pathway for the treatment with chemozolomide. Earlier with the DTIC dark carbazine, which I just read out, which is being transferred to the HMTIC and then the production of the MTIC to the methyldiazinium ion and to the DNA adapt. TMZ has a shoulder route for this, which is used as of now. Now, there is a problem regarding this demosolomite. Although it has been used in the clinic for more than a decade to treat Glioblastoma, the molecular mechanisms underlying TMZ base action are still not completely understood even today. So because the TMZ resistance is a major problem in malignant glioma, the cytoprotective DNA repair protein, uh, which is the MGMT, you could call it, or OC archive cloning, DNA archive transferase, transfers the methyl adducts at the OC O6 guanine to a cysteine receptor residue. Identifying newly diagnosed glioblastomas that may respond to alkylating chemotherapy, that is maybe the temolozomite or some other drugs that they, pro-drugs, have become one key factor today. 
Now here, I'm coming close to what we are doing in a research laboratory regarding this temozolomide. The importance of these drugs is that they do not require hepatic metabolism for activation, implying that in a biomechanism, they can easily activate themselves. And here we will be concentrating upon the transfer of the methyltryptamine with the O6 position of the guanine for cell apoptosis. Now, in, in a laboratory, we underwent a computational calculations where we try to calculate the methyl methyltimozolomide, methyl diazonium ion, and the methyl guanine adapt using an assorted uh, theoretical level of calculation, that is uh, some functional uh, basis sets. And here we find that temozolomide, methyl diazonimide, and the methyl one end uh, gives us some very important readings. Now, when we come to this, uh, BITC is called benzyl isotisonate. Uh, we felt that it can be a candidate for anti cancer property. So we tried to you know, differentiate the difference between the methyl uh, substituted. Uh, Temozolomide with this BITC temozolomide. So these are the enthalpy of formation, a, the single point calculation in computers, and they give us very important readings out here, which I will not mention in detail. Uh, this is the molecular electrostatic potential between the methyl guanine and the BITC guanine adduct. The structures show similar nucleophilic reactivity sites at the guanine adducts, which is very important. Now, the homo lumo analysis gives us these readings in electron volt, and the gap, or what we call the energy gap between the uh, transitions, is very, very low, which implies that there is a possibility of being stable at the same time being reactive for biomechanism. So these are the descriptors for the frontier molecular orbitals for both methyl guanine and BITC guanine. We felt that the guanine and ducts of BITC at the assorted level in which we will calculate is in close agreement with the corresponding values of timozolomide, which is already a standard. Hence, TMZBITC may exhibit similar close pharmacological properties, but like I mentioned, this is a theoretical study, a simulation in computer software, so it needs to go under a clinical trial to really see it. Let us have a closer look at the temozolomide. Uh, we did a potential energy surface scan for their conformers. And we found that when the amide group is opposite to the tetrazine ring, uh, the stability is obtained. It, it acquires the global minimum in its potential energy surface in comparison to the other conformer. The other conformer, when the amide group is on the side of the tetrazine ring, looks as though that it is having an intramolecular hydrogen bonding which may have uh, increased its energy. Now, these are the optimization in the gas phase and the solvent phase. We, are, we also subjected the structure to an aqueous solution in computer through simulation. And we also try to see the trends in the atomic charges for various descriptions like Mulliken, Merz, Coleman, and the nat natural population analysis which all of them give the same trend, so to say. Well, these are the graphs for those atomic charges trends for the molecule, Coleman, and the natural population analysis in the gas phase, as well as in the aqueous solution, which the trends are quite okay. Well, this is the mapping again, electrostatic uh, potential mapping again, which was done in a B trilip or what you call the density functional theory with the basis set, uh, which is given there. 
And here we find that uh, when we look at this oxygen, here it is red in color, and here almost all the others are blue in color. So here it tells us the nucleophilicity and the electrophilicity, which uh, we believe and which we anticipated it has come out as it ought to be. Now, these, uh, the table is a little bit small. Uh, it's uh, rather huge, so, but I want to keep it in one slide. But anyway, vibrational assignments of the fundamental modes of the temozolomite, which was calculated at the same assorted level. Here also, when we uh, compare it with experimental results, we found that they were uh, uh, connoting to each other, and we were very happy with that. Uh, this is uh, one uh, particular uh, IR spectra, which gives us some uh, features of the functional groups and their absorption frequencies. And this is the electronic properties of the timosolomite, which was calculated at the assorted level again. Here we have three theoretical, what you call it, absor absor absorbance or the absorption peak. The peak we observed at 315.30, uh, we take it into consideration to be the major contribution of the transition from the non-bonding to the pi star because of the oscillator strength, which is rather high out here. And coming into the transition energy, we also found that it is quite commendable. The other two theoretical peaks that we get out here, 319.62 and 295.49, are the contribution from other parts of the transition from the pi to pi star. Now, this is the second order perturbation theory analysis of the fourth matrix in natural bond order, where we try to see the distribution of electrons in the whole system. Here, the charge transfers are mainly due to the lone pairs of the electrons of nitrogen and oxygen atoms, which leads to intramolecular charge transfer that may have caused the system to stabilize. Now, these are the descriptions again for the frontier molecular orbital, where we see the homo lumo energy. And the difference between them is just around 4.00 approximately electron volt. And we see the other descriptions of the ionization potential, electron affinity, the chemical potential, electron negativity, and the felicity, where all these readings uh, can be correlated to the stability. And then when we come to the homo and the lumo transition, like I mentioned in the gas phase in the aqueous solution, the small energy gap in electron volt given to indicate theoretical substan substantiation to the bioactivity of timozolomite using the computational platform. Now, let me come to my conclusion. Uh, considering the methyl uh, Temozolomite and the BITC temozolomite. BITC temozolomite is found to exhibit similar pharmacological properties to methyl temozolomite in considering the prodrug activation of temozolomite and DTIC, which was already established about 30 years back. Computational inquiry of the gas waste and aqueous solution of temozolomite to its spectroscopic indexes are in good agreement to experimental results. Trends in atomic charges associated with three descriptors, like the molecule, the Coleman, and the natural uh, bonding analysis, incur stability of the structure from their intramolecular hydrogen bonding, connoting charge transfer from the lone pairs of oxygen and nitrogen atoms in the natural bonding or vital analysis, which may also connote to the in the lambda max that we found in the UV visible spectroscopy, which is 315.3 nanometer for the n to pi star transition. The global reactivity descriptors of temozolomite in both the media, the gas, and the aqueous solution from the frontier molecule orbital approach show the properties relative to its stability again. The small energy gap, like I mentioned, of activation indicate theoretical substantiation of the bioactivity of 
chemozolomide in computational platform. This, like I said, that it needs to go uh, through experimental, you know, subjection and then maybe through some clinical trial to really uh, see the real picture. The quiz solution gives a better stability than the gas phase in understanding the electronic properties of the chemozolomide and its deriv derivatives. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. I thought we have just started, but <laughs> I think uh, our resource person is in such a hurry to conclude his presentation. Anyway, it was very worthful listening to your presentation. And I request the audience uh, who are watching us online to post your queries and questions on the comment box, on the chat box there. If you have any queries and questions or any comments, you are most welcome to drop in your uh, comments in the chat box. One of our audience is uh, typing his question, sir. Let's just wait for him. Um, in the meantime, all are welcome to do so. Whatever uh, queries and doubts you have, you are most welcome to drop in and sir will clarify for you. So the question has come. Um, let me read out for you. What should be the minimum DMSO concentration to dissolve temozolomide drug, TMZ drug? Uh, do, I, do I need to repeat the question? No, no, it's okay. Okay. I, uh, if we found that it is viable at the end, scientifically, that it may need to undergo a uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, experimental subjection, and maybe to a clinical trial. Only at that time, maybe we'd be able to understand what exactly would be the uh, experimental procedure for the question that has been asked. I hope I do clarify the question being asked. Uh, one thing is, uh, which okay. I didn't mention regarding the MGMT. Okay. The methyl guanine, uh, the methyl transferase, or the alkyl transfer. Mm. Uh, actually, this MGMT uh, in some person, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, become highlighted. But in okay. some person, it become it can become highlighted uh, because it is a protein in our brain. In some, uh, you know, depending upon our biological system. In some, it do not become active at all. In some, it becomes active. If it is active, a person with the glioblastoma, uh, if it is treated with this prodrug, it can prolong the lifetime. But mm -hmm. those where the MGMT are not active, there is no way out. It is, there, there's no reason of giving them this prodrug because it doesn't become active at all to you know, suppress the the DNA of this tumor. Therefore, actually this MGMT uh, is a gene that repairs the damaged cells. When chemotherapy kills the uh, glioblastoma cells, MGMT fixes them. MGMT okay. methylation prevents this repair and ensures that more tumor cells are being killed. Mm -hmm. But then, like I mentioned, if this MGMT you know, does not uh, uh, come out, uh, uh, does not exhibit himself in the tumor, then it becomes difficult for the patient with this disease to be treated or either to prolong the lifetime. Mm -hmm. So some uh, complications are there. Those okay. are the uh, areas where we try to see how, you know, a person without these proteins or how to activate these proteins in a person so that at least their life can be prolonged who are being contracted with this disease. That's very interesting, especially to treat um, cancer patients. Very interesting, sir. Thank you very much for that, for the yeah, extra lecture. So I don't think any more questions are coming up or any other queries. Thank you very much, sir, for your time that you have spared for us. And we hope to uh, meet you again, maybe some other time when we organize another international webinar. Hope to see you again. Thank you very much and have a nice day, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.